All right, I'm showing you two iterations of design, and I'm gonna explain about the difference between two after showing the like a making video of this. But I'm very happy with what we are currently going uh, the the direction that we're going right now. As you can see, I can already imagine like this being compiled into four different parts so that um, it looks kind of like a hand and it works like a hand. So it's all linkage based system. As you can see, um, it's actuated pretty well, smoothly. So yeah, I'm gonna explain later about the difference between two because this is the first iteration and this second. And let's begin. French are finished. As you can see, all components are printed at once. So we're gonna take it off and then we assemble. So these are two iterations of current prototypes that I made through the Fusion 360 speed modeling. And even though the parts look very similar, I adjusted at least four different modifications that could actually function better. So those examples are this end component was reaching that end point because it was rotating over 90 degrees so the axis of the rotation got stuck after it's fully flexed and now it's a little bit differently designed with the changing the linkage position so if you flex it doesn't go like as far as I, it was before so it doesn't have that I still have the problem of uh, mid link getting off but I'm gonna fix that later but anyways, overall the, the sizing too, so sizing here has been changed into better format and also the little bit of like a translational offset. So whenever we use 3D printing, you might want to have some of the offset, but the problem was that I made 0.3 millimeters offset for each plane, which means it was total like 0.6 millimeters on every offset, which made this a very wobbly uh, motion. But this one is reduced down to 0.2, so you can see that it's less spacings between the components as you can see from the parts right here. So yeah, that was pretty much update. And you might question like, why am I trying to divide everything in half and then try to assemble? There are two major reasons for that. First, I'd like to have a clean print surfaces to have better assembly. Say if I have like a 3D structure, it might have like surface with a layer bulging outside because of the limitation of 3D printing. So I'd like to reduce that by making into slicing into a half and then printing into the build plate direction. So I have a clean 2.5 dimensional surface. And the, another reason that I'm doing this is because at some point I'd like to move on to making injection molded, uh, like a plastic model type of thing. If you see plastic model, you'll see all the parts are actually divided in half because it's really hard to produce a part in one direction. You might need like many pieces mold if you're trying to have that overhang and also undercut. So that's why I'm, even though it's quite hard, it's giving me more complexity on design tasks to divide and then consider about how I'm gonna print it. But I think it's gonna pay off at the end if we try to mass manufacture this part. So yeah, that's pretty much it, the update of the iteration. <laughs> 